Hey, what's up, fam? Thank y'all for tuning in once again, as always. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so every time I drop a video, you will be the first to know about it. Okay, let's get into this story. I saw this article again, came across one of my news feeds, pop up on my phone. And it talks about a single mother who used to be a quote unquote trad wife or traditional wife. And as I'm reading this article, and you hear the stories all over the internet, you know, men want a traditional wife, wife want a traditional, women want a traditional husband. But I don't think they understand. Well, my question is, what tradition are y'all speaking of? Because the tradition that most women and most men in America that I know of that's speaking of, when they're speaking of traditional wives, it's not the way that it was supposed to be. But let's get into this story. I don't think I'm going to read the whole thing because I think I'm going to be able to make my point fairly quickly or get to what I'm trying to say very fairly quickly. So let's get into it. This is from Winnie, W-E-N-I.com, and it reads, A single mother speaks out on how the trad wife lifestyle led to her divorce. And this is from CNN. Wow, that's interesting. Sporting retro 50s hairstyles and cinched aprons, trad wife influencers have taken over a pocket of the internet. Those traditional wives who showcase 30 second videos of homemade sourdough bread content and other glimpses into the making of a perfect home are no ordinary stay at home moms. They steadfastly believe in traditional gender roles. That means staying devoted to housework and taking care of the children and being subservient to their working husbands. Let me continue. Anita Templeton of Littleton, Colorado embodied the trad wife lifestyle for 10 years. At 4 a.m. she would start making bread and, being, and begin prep for the day's meals. Always from scratch, the mother of four would do all of the household chores while her husband focused solely on breadwinning. Now, after escaping a life that was miserable and unfulfilling, Templeton shared her story with her social media following and podcast listeners to help other women who find themselves in similar situations and want a new life. Social quote, social media can make everything look really pretty because it's a 30 second clip, but 30 seconds out of 10 years really omits a lot of the ugliness in those relationships, she said. Templeton now 41 says she was raised as an evangelist evangelical Christian, believing that her husband and authority, I mean, had authority over his wife. But today she's a divorced single mom by choice and advocates for women who wish to break free from a relationship dynamic that all too easily can create an extreme power imbalance. Here's the problem. Number one, staying at home. Staying at home wife, you are an evan evan evangelical Christian. If you're a Christian, that means you read the scriptures or the Bible, whatever you call it. If that's, or you, or you supposed to follow what the scriptures say. If that's the case, then what you were, what she was doing was against what the word said. I ain't talking about the divorce. That's the second part. I'm talking about the first part, being a homemaker. Cause that's not what the scriptures say a traditional wife is. But let me continue. Trad wife influences romanticize and glamorize the period before and directly after World War II, a time when most women were homemakers. Some trad wives also take a stance against the feminist movement, believing only men should be in the workplace while women focus on home life. Like, see, the thing about it is, a lot of these women in this feminism, not feminism, but the, but, but the stay at home, yeah. There was a time when the husband, stay, you know, make, go to work, make all the money, the wife, didn't have to work, so they chose to stay home. They're like, well, shoot, if I ain't got to work, I can stay home, be a homemaker, okay? But these were the stories of the pool guy come over. Uh, she got a tennis coach that, you know, the milkman, you know, dropping the milk off and she's standing there talking to the milkman or the lawn guy. Junior don't look like he should be, he should be junior. Stories like that. Husband come home and all the stuff is gone. Wife done left them, divorced them. That's where they come from. Why? Because the woman is at home bored. Now, 
most of us don't want our wives out in the workplace around a bunch of men, just like women don't want their husband around a bunch of women. Because they don't trust their own gender. <clears throat> they get, I mean, I get it. But the thing about it is, what they say, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Nobody, not a man, not a woman, should be sitting at home doing nothing. Not a child. Child has chores. Child go to school, come home, do housework, then school work, then take your butt to bed. Whatever. But no one should be around sitting by idly doing nothing because all you're doing is wasting time. And your people were not meant, were not created to sit down. Hell, when, you, when women have children, the correct way for women to have children is to squat like you're taking a dump, not laying on their back with their legs propped open. That's how you have the baby. To, to release the baby, you're supposed to be standing up squatting over because it's easier on you and it's easier for the baby to come out and it's more natural. So again, life doesn't start on your back when your mama's on her back. Life starts, your mama's supposed to be standing up. But anyway... People have misunderstood what traditional, and we're gonna get into that here just shortly. They said there are people in traditional marriages that are happy, absolutely happy, said Christian whoever, Ganey, a counselor and adjunct professor in the Department of Human Services at Ellen University in North Carolina. It is really just a high risk situation that somebody could get lost and overwhelmed by the duties that they have and not be treated with respect or appreciated by the partner who is completely in charge of the financing and other major decisions. Here's, okay, let me keep going. In the world, see the people, holidays, good example. Back in the days of Constantine, you can look this up, history lesson. You had the Christians or Catholics and you had pagans. You had pagans had all the fun holidays. The summer, the, the, the winter solstice, the Easter, <clears throat> things of that nature. Christians or religious people had the boring holidays. You have a king who's trying to appease everybody. So what does he do? He intermingles the holidays, the winter solstice. He makes it Christmas. Look it up. Constantine. Constantine, back in the Roman Empire, said we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Nowhere in the scripture does it say Jesus was born in the dead of winter. You would think that the Most High would have his son that, you know, if he's going to come and be the light of the world, <clears throat> you would think he would, he would have his son be make sure his son was born in the spring to, you know, kind of commemorate life. Like, like in the old ancient days that the new year, as in the scriptures say, the new year started when grass started to grow, when the new leaves grew in the spring, like around by March in today's times, not in the dead of winter in January. But anyway, so uh, like I say, well, like Constantine, like I say, mixed the, the winter solstice with the birth of Jesus or the Messiah. Constantine, they also mixed Easter, the death, burial, and resurrection with a pagan ritual of going out of an adult <clears throat> sexually immoral uh, holiday, which you can read about yourself, and mix it together and call Easter Sunday. And but say, and they got you saying believing that uh, the Messiah was you no know, died on Friday and rose on Sunday, which mathematically could not be possible. <clears throat> but if you look at the scriptures and you look at the history, you once you find out when the Passover was. And when you find out how long the Passover lasted and when it ended, you can count the days and then it makes sense. And you really see the day that the Messiah was crucified. But anyway, my so I say that to say this. The traditional wife <clears throat> role, they, what are you going to say? They conflated it? Like messed it up? Took it away from scriptural ways and turn into a Western civilization way. And it has screwed up marriages ever since. That's why you have a 
fifty percent marriage rate. And people say, oh, back in the day, these you know, I had, my mom was married to my my grandfather was married. No, hold on, my grandfather was married to my grandmother, and uh, my mom was married to my dad. They was miserable. He was abusive, cheated on her, was drunk, and she was at home. She was a homebody, traditional wife. There's a lot of stress with that. With the man, you know, having you know support, making all the money. And it's a lot of stress for the wife to make sure by herself that the house is taken care of and having all these kids and just laying up and doing nothing, but making sure the house is taken care of, the kids taken care of. It's a lot of work, both sides. So there has to be a compromise and a joint effort for everything to work, but the man is still the head of the household. The man is the one who make the final decisions. The woman can you know, give her input, say what she feel, because women have knowledge. But sometimes you got to separate the knowledge from the emotions. When you're able to do that, which men are able to, most men are able to do better than women, you come up with a great idea. Like I said, it doesn't mean the man got to make every idea. It's just that he got to be the one who made the final decision. Because real life, and I've got comments, people put comments in my uh, on my videos, when we talk about women and men and roles and this and the third, and they quick women are quick to say, well, you know, the man is in charge. So if anything fall apart, it's his fault, right? Exactly. That's why, like I say, y'all are quick to say that when things go bad, but if things go good, you want all the credit. But if things go bad, oh, it's that man's fault. Ain't he the head of the house? Okay, well, you need to treat him like the head of the house. 24-7, not only when it benefits you. But let me get back to the story. In the world of traditional wives, the husband has the authority when it comes to financial choices, but the control can stretch even further in which some women cannot leave the house without permission and in some relationships, punishments are in place. Now that's, now I say that's, that's what I'm saying, you, you're taking it too far. The arrangements allow room for financial abuse, holding all money and power over the other person's head and emotional abuse which lead to one partner losing their self-agency and confidence, said Susan Degas White a licensed counselor and professor and chair of North Illinois University Department of Counseling and Higher Education, DeKalb, Illinois. It can give the person who's working an awful lot of power. It should be a shared partnership. I don't believe in that word partnership. It's just, ah, the way y'all use it ain't right. All of us should be encouraged to have a sense of agency, meaning that we can, we can be active and we can take control of our lives and we can do something that's needed to contribute to the greater good. Exactly. They say Timberton for the person 24 to get married. She got married 26, had a first child, quit a job, became a full-time homemaker. Uh, she said that's what that's what she she said that's what she thought she was supposed to do. And I thought like happiness in my life would start. She wanted to be a mom, still felt empty and long after the birth of the first child. She thought, well, maybe she needs more kids. I'm just not enough of a mother. I need more kids to really flex my mom muscle, and then I'll be fully satisfied. You say, uh, uh, let's see, keep going. It's one feeling for feel. You say, anytime that something is romanticized, you have to really question whether it exists in reality. Exactly. Man, that is a quote. My God, I want to put that quote. I want to put that quote in bold font. Anytime something is romanticized, you have to really question whether it exists in reality. You really, you're really risking and expecting actually that the other person has your best interest at heart. You're kind of abdicating that responsibility of oneself. Borzumato Bar Ganey said, amazing, that is great. Like I said, this is a pretty long read. It's not really that much longer, but I made that point. So like I said, the, the, the question I said, I, 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 I presented first is, what is the role? What is the actual a traditional wife? And like I said, I believe that people are mis got it misunderstood. They're not actually doing what the scriptures say they should do. So what I want to do is go to those scriptures. Let me see if I can find it. Here we go. And it will tell you. You can you can go online and find it. I usually had to you know go to the concordance to the Bible and read, but now you can look up look it up online. Then you can go and verify it in the book if you want to. But this is from BibleStudyTools.com, and I just put in like you know what is the role of a wife, 
and they give many scriptures about the role of a wife, but I just want to read through a few of them to get y'all an understanding of how these relationships are supposed to go and how they'll become, the relationships become the way that you feel they should be. So, uh, let's get to a couple of scriptures here. It says, let's say go 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. Uh, let's say, but since sexual immor immorality is occurring, each man should have a sexual relation relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. Uh, let's keep going. All love, women are worthy of respect. Love his wife as he loves himself, and wife must respect her husband. That's Ephesians 5 and 33. Uh, let's see. Because what I'm trying to get... Let's see, Proverbs 12 and 4 says, a wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. A wife, Proverbs 14 and 1, a wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands, the foolish one tears hers down. Proverbs 18 and 22, he who finds a wife finds a good and receive, oh, he who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the most high. That means, men, you go out there and find you a wife. No one, it doesn't say that the wife finds a man. It says the man go out there and find him a wife. Proverbs 25, 24, better to live on a corner of a roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Man, let me see. But I want to get to this one here. Oh, hold on. Let's get to Ephesians 5, 20 through 22 through 25. Let's read these. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands and everything. So see, when you say the word submit, a lot of these modern women like to use, think of the word slavery. So what you're saying is that church you go to every Sunday, when you're hooping and hollering and you're listening to the word from the preacher, you mean to tell me that you consider yourself a slave to the church? No, no, a slave to the Messiah? Is that how you think he looks at you as a slave? Because that's not what these words say in these verses. It's saying submit, the church has submitted to the Messiah which means you're following the Messiah in everything, knowing that he is the way to go. He's gonna lead you in the right direction, will not steer you wrong. But fast forward to 2024 and they're swerving down. If you say, tell your wife to submit, you call her a slave, my gosh. Husbands love your wife just as a Messiah love the church and gave himself up for her. And that's one thing women sometimes don't seem to realize that when a man takes on a wife and a family, that's his responsibility. You know, the Messiah came down to take on the sins of the world. That was his responsibility. It was not a job of glamour. He knew that he was going to be crucified, but he still came and did what he needed to do to spread the word, to become the lamb of the people, the sacrificial lamb of the people. Husbands do the same thing for their families. Now, they may not be able to provide you with big house, picket fence, dog, you know, all you know, new cars every year, all that kind of stuff. But it will provide you with a cover, will provide you with protection, he would do everything in his power to make sure that you are good. And a lot of times, I believe a lot of women take take it for for advantage. It was like take take a you know take advantage of that, and it's uh it messes up the marriage. But let's go to First Peter three one through seven. Wives, in the same way, submit yourself to your own husband so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. It's amazing 
But amazing, if you are a spiritual woman, a, 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 a God-fearing woman, and go to church and you know and, and, and follow the scripture, don't just go to church and be evil and because of people out when you get home, or going to the club and then you know, on Saturday night and then wear the same dress, roll that dress down and be in church Sunday money. No, you live by the word. Even if your husband is not a believer, the scriptures say that just in you and your feminine ways, your biblical ways, you can win over that man. You gotta have faith. That's that. That's that faith of a month of a mustard seed. That 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 the Reverend like to say on Sunday morning. And if you say, "Oh yeah, I gotta have faith of a mustard seed," well, there you go. That's your prime example. Your prime example. Win your husband over to the Most High. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from outward adornment like contoured makeup, lashes, wigs, Botox, BBLs. This should not come from that. That's exactly what it said. Yeah, go read it for yourself. Such as elaborate hairstyles, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self and un the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is the which is of great worth in the most high sight. For this is the way the holy woman or the past who put their hope in the most high used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Yeah, don't be scared. Let the man do his job. <clears throat> he found you, so you just got to have faith in him. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner. Partner. Hmm. And as heirs with you of grace, of the graces gift of life so that nothing would hinder your prayers. All right. So now I read all that to kind of build up to the main verses, the role of a traditional wife, a traditional scripture wife is right here. Man, I didn't think I was going to preach today. Y'all go ahead and give something to the offer. <laughs> Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. It said a wife, a noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. <clears throat> her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. So this woman is not sitting around doing housework all day or watching TV. It says she selects wool and flax and works eager with her hands. She is like a merch. She's like the merchant ship bringing her food from afar. You know what that means? Merchant ship does leaves the house, goes out, does some work, and brings everything back to the house. Bring things back home. She gets up while it's still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. So basically she gets up, makes sure her husband, the kids, everybody is fed, you know, prepared for the day. Her, her, whoever comes in, cleans the house or whatever. She got to say female service. So, you know, like, I mean, hey, it's basically saying you need, uh, you got, if you got a maid. Now, the women that come by who, who cleans house, it's not that expensive. I mean, if you, if you think about it in the grand scheme of things, if you, Think about what you spend money on, what you choose to spend your money on. It's not that expensive to have somebody come and clean your house. You can say, well, I don't trust the women. Well, you know what I'm saying? Put your stuff up. But so, because the scriptures say, like female, whatever, female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vine yard. Now, how in the heck does she earn money? She's sitting at home watching TV, doing housework. Make it make sense to me. Explain it to me. The uh, comment box in the comments, put it in there. How does this woman make money if she's doing housework all day? She can't. So that means she's out there earning. You understand from her money. So, so the thing is, man, if you want to pay all the bills, that's great. Nowhere does it say pay 50, 50 or pay whatever. But if you want to pay all the bills, that's great. But your wife does not sit at home and do nothing. She has to be in her purpose, as women like to say, and 
become the better version of herself every day. Which means she gotta get she gotta get out that house. Anybody who sits in the house get bored. Hell, men, anybody, kids, nobody can sit around the house and do nothing all day. That is ignorant to even think that. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. Plural, tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. What? So you're saying she makes soaps and perfumes and sell them at these vendor shows on the weekend? Probably. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grabs the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. So she works in the community. She's like, you know, she does community activism. When it snows, it snow back in the Bible day. That's what I'm saying. I don't think the, the Messiah was born you know, during Christmas, man. When it snows, she has no fear for her household. But all of them are clothed in scarlet. This woman have made clothes. And then she go out there and sell them. And then whatever money she comes back, hey, I want to buy that acre there. And then we're going to make a vine, vine, vineyard. She makes covering for her, coverings for her bed and she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh all the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Does not eat the bread of idleness. Translation, she ain't sitting on her butt all day doing nothing. For y'all who believe that a traditional wife is supposed to stay home and make bread every morning and clean the house all day, you are fools. You are fools if you think that. And this is why, like I say, most of these marriages end because one, you got women who don't want to go through what their parents went through. You got women who don't want to go through what their mothers went through in a hellacious relationship. So they say, I'm not going to be like my mama. I'm going to... Make sure I go out here, get my degree, make my money so I don't depend on no man and I can do what I want to then become headstrong. You can't tell them nothing. Then they get into marriage. You can't tell them nothing and the marriage fails. And if the man is not doing what they feel need to be, he need to be doing, not making the money they feel he need to be making, they want to go and leave. And we're talking about the perspective of the woman, not the man. It's been done wrong. They've been doing it wrong for a long time. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the most high is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Again, works not sitting at home doing nothing. So that's only for those who, like I say, who believe that this is true gospel. Now they got people who don't, you know, who ain't religious and don't believe in the God and the Christianity and all that kind of stuff. Forget that. If anything, this is a foundation of how the world works. And it's been going for a long time. So for those of y'all who feel like a traditional wife stays at home, does nothing, like I said, you got it wrong. And the black American people, y'all know better. So y'all have been in church since the beginning of time. So y'all know that y'all grandmothers and mothers pray for y'all <clears throat> and supposedly believe in the most high and in the Messiah. So if that's the case, you gotta go by his word. I don't care if it's in First, I mean, the New Old Testament or New Testament, it's in there. Go buy it. It is gospel. So that's what a traditional wife is supposed to be. Supposed to, as a maybe I call like a partner or a team or like a team, she's out there doing her thing too. Period. Point blank. There is no just one person doing anything. Y'all working together to build a household again. So, which means that you still, regardless, you can't live outside your means because, like I say, you have to, you know, figure out what you're going to spend your money on. Like I said, you get your house, get somebody to come clean your house that you ain't, since you ain't got to do it. 
So you ain't got to do it. Shoot, you know, you go out there, shoot, learn how to sew, make clothes, make some, you know, and, and go out and sell, you know, go and make some soaps and some perfumes and or learn how to cook something that you can go and start a, I don't know, a food truck or something, yeah, whatever. So that way you can go out there say, and sell and, and make money and then use your money to buy what's needed for the house. See what I'm saying? So it's not that hard. It's just that somehow we got away from what the traditional wife role is supposed to be. In, so we just got to get back to it. And this is stuff you got to teach your children and also some of these headstrong women. But anyway, tell me what you think about this, man. Leave your comments below. Let's dialogue because you know how we do it around here. If you want to support the channel, don't forget the super chats, the super thanks. And also, you can go to the description box and there are links that you can click on to help support the channel too. And with that being said, oh, you don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. With that being said, I leave you in peace and I'll see you on the other side.